pick one. So I thought you started this by saying it's the FSD news, the robotaxi news, and the AI news, right? So those that 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 cluster, that ecosystem. Yeah. Um, is that the one that you're going to pick as the most consequential? Because Tesla is an AI company, right? So if I share this, is this the table that you think was the best, which is right here, right? That jump right there. That's what matters the most, right? Boom. Is that true? Yes, absolutely. Brian? So I, I would say on, I've got two answers, but only one of them is mine. The the short answer is the analysts are excited about the 2.5, about the interim compact that will fill the gap uh, for some amount of time. That's the thing that I think is driving Wall Street. But to me, that's just this much, this much of the story. The real story is all this compute that you're showing on screen right now is how we got from version 11 to version 12 and it is a step change and you can see it it looks like a step change because that's how much compute it needs that's how much data you need and this will open the door for licensing if you are if you didn't start working on autonomy 10 years ago i don't know how you will be able to catch up in the next five to ten years i don't know how you will get to where tesla is today uh even if you went full all in today you're not going to make it within five years the problem is that big that comprehensive that impossible to crack um, and i think we're going to see a lot of oems lining up to license for one thing even if they do it today even as a memorandum of understanding they can step back and say there now we don't have to worry about it we can just let it be someone else's problem until it's solved and when it is we're on board but it's still going to mean three to five years from the time they're ready to integrate it to the time it actually is in the cars and out on the market. So it is, to me, that is huge. It is yeah, beyond, beyond compare. And it might be that, uh, that Tesla won't sell it. They'll only license it, which would mean all, <laughs> all new cars around the world would be chipping in a few bucks a month to Tesla. And by a few, I mean maybe 50, maybe 100 uh, times how many millions and millions of cars every month. It will be potentially insane. Okay. And then what? what is it about the call yesterday that you guys thought was not, that wasn't as good news, that was the worst part of it, or maybe you didn't hear something that you thought you, you really wanted to hear? I'd have liked to hear India, uh, fine. It's it's in the works. I think it's too early to say anything. Mexico yeah. is not too early. Say something, say something. So that's what I was hoping to hear and I didn't. So I don't know. I'd say the other thing that I wasn't thrilled about is their actual, the ride hailing app, go to market strategy of, being fully integrated without any long-term plans at this point that we know about to actually allow, you know, other people to participate in that network or to license it or to partner with people like Uber. Um, obviously from a near-term investment standpoint, it means Tesla's going to make more money. It's also a lot more complexity um, and not that Tesla can't manage it, but one of the fears that I have for Tesla is that we are going to be moving into an era of being so big and so profitable that <laughs> we really okay. paint a target on our back for regulatory issues and antitrust right. actions. Yeah. And so I, I would very much like to see opportunities for other people to participate in the money-making gravy train that robo-taxis are going to be, specifically for the purpose of kind of deflecting hostile regulatory attention. Um, and yeah, just, you know, governments are not going to like one company being this big and this powerful. And so that's the the thing that, and that's not to say that there's not those types of plans for Tesla, but we don't have any visibility into what that's going to be at this point in time. And mm -hmm. it just makes me a little bit nervous at this point. All right. That's, uh, that's eight. It's at eight, eight, right? They're going to do all of that in eight, eight. Uh, for me, it was, um, you know, I was happy with what Elon said when he was asked about the 25% control and his commitment to Tesla. But 
I, I wish that he gave it even stronger statements. And I'm aware, and I'm aware that he's not able to. <laughs> this is legal. This is uh, you know going through the courts right now. It's just things he can't say. But it would have been nice if he says, "My heart is all in on Tesla. I'm warrior mode." Which you can see his actions are definitely that. That is what's happening right now. It would have been nice to hear that. Uh, you know, he said something like, at first he goes and says, uh, well, you know, autonomy is, is here no matter what, even if I'm not here, okay? But then he goes to the bot, you know, and that's like, okay, you know, that's, uh, I get you. You don't want to push the bot to succeed until you've got this, uh, you know, this this thing happen. Then he said about the buybacks, right? That's one method that he could possibly get his 25% control. Is that correct to interpret that way when he said that? Because it was the, the next sentence he said was about, you know, buybacks could, if we have significant free cash flow, we can do more buybacks. I interpret that because it was a second sentence after the statement that is regarding his getting to 25%. And, and I think also moving to Texas and getting preferred shares, that, that's, the, that's probably the biggest concern we have right now. Very small possibility, it's very low chance that it's not going to pass an annual shareholder meeting and then B, somehow he decides to leave. That's the biggest concern that we all have, or at least I do. So I'd like to have more clarity on that. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I, I'm i less worried about that. I don't know. When it comes to the buybacks, uh, Emmett made a great point on the live stream yesterday where he was he pointed out Elon's at about 13% ownership right now. In order to double that, you would need to cut the number of shares in half. We don't have... It's unlikely that Tesla will be buying back a half a billion dollars in stock over the next few years. And every share you buy back makes it more difficult to buy the next one back. And pretty soon you get to a point where there's not a lot of float left. And it'd be amazing to see that happen, to watch our shares go through the roof because they're trying to buy up the company. I'm not sure that can happen. I've heard conflicting reports that said, even if they moved to Texas, they wouldn't be able to issue a second class of shares, um, that that's something that is established when a stock is first IPO'd. So I would need to do more research to know if that's even a possibility. Um, but I I'm not sure what the critical difference is between 13 and 25% ownership. Um, it feels like at least for now and over the in recent years, he's had sufficient control, certainly enough control that he felt comfortable divesting some of it to make other investments. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's his call and, you know, I'm willing to hear him out no matter what direction he wants us to consider. But, uh, yeah, buybacks would be interesting and there can come a day. There are several paths to having a day in the future where there is too much money to realistically deploy. And that would be a magical thing to witness. Okay. So here's, here's why I use this um, title, right? That I think this has changed Tesla forever because the, the part that I loved about what I heard yesterday, right? Was that uh, I'm hoping that I'm right, but basically there's going to be drivable cars and there's going to be autonomous cars. So, but the way to get to the drivable cars is to use existing SEXY uh, path, using the existing production lines, using the existing uh, factories, and you can get to 50% growth by, you know, they explain how they can do that by using uh, aspects of the Unbox model and then creating that. And then they said there's going to be additional models coming out the end of this year, even possibly, or certainly the first half of next year, and it's very likely to be either, you know, Brian and I spoke about this, is it just a trim of the Model 3 and Model Y, or it could actually be models of the Model 3 Model Y variants of that. But, you know, that that's, that for me, it's a crystallization of what this company is. We're going to have drivable cars, and we're going to continue to build drivable cars using the existing factories and production lines. We're also going to make non-drivable non cars, the autonomous cars, and we have a new platform for that, and that's going to be coming out. And so that makes it so much more like, okay, that's the transition. That's the transition from a car company to an auto company. <laughs> and, uh, you know, calling CyberCab, calling the FSD version 12.4 and 12.5 or better, we can see six months ahead. Ashok saying that I can actually measure exactly. Uh, and and because I kn we know 
like we see an edge case that we need to solve, we feed it videos, we, we know, we can see how the neural net solves it. Because we know how lo roughly it takes, how long it does for each, the, each edge case, we can, that's how come they have so much confidence that they're going to get to robo taxi level, uh, you know, capability of autonomy and the confidence from them, you know, that they're, they're going to do this. Elon saying we are, and we will, if you're not, if you're, if you're, if you're not in, if you don't believe in autonomy, don't invest in a company and we are, and we will get there. And so for me, those, it's like, it's, that's the transition. That's a transition from a car company to an autonomous AI company. Uh, what about you guys? How did you guys, am I, am I, maybe I'm off, right? Maybe you guys think that, yeah, it was a great call. Yes, it made tremendous amount of impact to everybody, but it, you know, we have to wait and see until RoboTaxi truly launch. We still need to wait and see before, uh, you know, the robots come two years from now, whatever. Yeah, I don't think we need to wait at this point in time. One of the things that I've been reading recently that is coming to be basically consensus in the AI community is that the real factor that everything boils down to in AI right now is data. That whether you're looking at Claude or ChatGPT um, or Llama or Lambda or Bard, that as we scale up and as long as you give these models enough firepower from a compute standpoint and from you know a number of parameters standpoint, they really can do a great job of just understanding the data set that has been fed into them and being able to reproduce that in a reliable way. And <clears throat> this seems to be true. So if you look at something like image generation, and you're looking at different types of architectures. You know, are you doing stable diffusion? Are you doing some other form? Like there's a number of different model architectures that people are using to do image generation. But it seems like at the end of the day, if you start with the same data set and you use enough compute and you have enough parameters, that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, matter what your architecture is, you end up with essentially a model that performs the exact same way. And the reason that that's important is because in Tesla's use case, we have the real world that we can constantly use to update the data set that we are using to train. And as long as there is real world data that we can change our data set with, which there will always be, there's always going to be an infinite variety of new data that we can get access to using this giant search engine that we have to supplement the data set that we have and improve its quality. And because of that, we have very, like the, the sky's the limit. There's no upper bound that we know of that says we cannot continue to improve the performance of full self-driving to the point where it's not only safe as a human, but far, far safer. So we should have superhuman level safety performance, driving performance. You know, you could have all different types of metrics and the using the architectures that we have in place, just continuing to do more of what we've done up to this point doesn't have a limit. It, it goes all the way. Um, and so if you if you say, OK, that's the case, then the profitability of Tesla as a company is something that has also very much room to grow from here. And then that same whole architecture ports over to the bot. And if we have the ability to use money that we're making from RoboTaxi to fuel the capital investments necessary to wow. build yeah. millions and millions of bots, billions of bots, like it's just insane. 